Okay, so thank you again for the uh, this introduction and for this invitation to talk about the challenges facing uh, the Palestinian uh, academia under under the Israeli occupation. This is uh, an honor to to be here, and it's also an honor to speak in front of also uh, very well known people and very respectful and also who are friends of, of Palestine. Uh, so actually, before telling you our sad stories, because our stories are really sad, we are under genocide, not only under occupation. But before, you know, before telling you these sad stories about occupation and the challenges we face, I will start the other way around. Uh, I will first show you some positive stories. So, because, you know, uh, as an academic person, we have uh, so we, we we have to be innovative in in the way we handle things. So I will show you uh, how I established a successful research lab without money, without resources. Uh, I will just change my share screen into. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I just can ah. Okay, I assume you see. So I have established a research group uh, called Sina Institute. You see my screen, right? Or not yet? Yes. Ah, okay. So I established a research institute called Sina Lab uh, for uh, computational linguistics and artificial intelligence. And uh, I'm happy that nowadays, and our research area is actually one of the most uh, active research areas uh, in, in computer science, at least. So I want to make sure that you see my, my desktop, right? Yes, we see the Sinalab webpage. Okay, okay, okay. So I established this and uh, computational linguistics and after ChatGPT, and artificial intelligence nowadays are so like the, the hot area. Uh, so I, I have a, a group of maybe about uh, 15 or 20 people, uh, PhD students, they are very smart, very active, working day and night to do good publications, high quality. And we managed to do many things. I will not go into details, I will just simplify it, but we actually, we get many awards, um, uh, prestigious awards. We also, uh, even uh, including, by the way, also uh, some awards from Google. And we have been covered by Al Jazeera, by Al Arabiya, by many uh, international uh, satellites. Uh, we do, by the way, we do just to, to tell you, we do the Arabic language, how computer can understand uh, the language. So it's, it's about semantics. So how, for example, the word bank, which which is a bank is a financial institution and bank is the side of a river. So if you use it in a in a context, uh, we build very smart state of the art systems on understanding which meaning. This is called where is this ambiguation, for example. And we are the state of the art, basically. We also do something called named entity recognition. Uh, where we can, uh, uh, you can try it later, you can try demo uh, to, to try it. So we do things are uh, in a very smart way. Uh, uh, so this is called named entity recognition, where we can recognize names of entities in text. We are the state of the art for Arabic named entity recognition. We are also the state of the art in uh, extracting synonyms. We are the state of the art of building something called the Arabic word net or the Arabic ontology and so on. So we, we developed really, uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm really happy to say that we did many uh, of the advanced technologies for Arabic at Birzeit University. Recently, we start changing our topics. We start changing our uh, research area. So I am not anymore doing pure computational linguistics. I want to do something called social computing. 
Why? Because after uh, October 7, we see something, you know, uh, we see a lot of bias in the media. So we want to tackle these kind of problems. We are tackling, for example, hate speech or offensive uh, language detection in Hebrew, not in Arabic, in Hebrew. And you can understand why. We are also working on to uh, face what's called AI bias in, in like large language models and so on. So we are fo focusing on these things. So I, my story is I established this lab. I have no funding or very, very limited, very, very little. Everything around me is, this, is actually discouraging. And my team is, is so active without even salaries, without anything. It's passion. It's not, it's hard work. It's also, there is a challenge because of the political situation. So this is my, I would say my good side of the story. I assume you see also my slide now. Okay. Okay, so now let me move to, to tell you what are so, or some of the challenges we face in doing research and under occupation. So one of the major challenges we face, and you can imagine its impact, is that we are unable to hire external professors or external students because of because Israelis they don't issue long term visas, uh, which restricts uh, our ability to bring experts and even to collaborate with international uh, academics. Uh, we have no resources, as I told you. So this is another challenge that, and you can imagine also its implication. Like we are not a country, we are just a local authority, have no money, have nothing. And uh, we have almost no or very limited financial resources or funding. And, uh, um, and thus we have uh, also no access to academic or, uh, or you know books and journals so sometimes we need uh, articles we cannot buy them because we have no money to buy them we have no access to uh, digital libraries uh, when we travel to conferences we get very little amount and we spend the rest from our buckets and so on so we have restrictions to movements this is maybe a more even more clear uh, a challenge is, is that uh, all Palestinian academia, I mean, including schools, students, so, so it's not only about research and, and, and academics. So everyone is facing mobility restrictions. So staff and students cannot make it on time. Uh, they are often delayed by checkpoints. And you can imagine you, if you are giving a lecture or exam, maybe, and many of the students, they don't show up. Or they, or they come late and you have to solve it. Uh, so this uh, disturbs our educational schedules and so on. So it's very hard to manage. Uh, so the checkpoints and you see in this map. So, you know, this is maybe to go. Oh, sorry. So going just to give you a sense of, of how, how big or how small this West Bank so from here, Ramallah, maybe to Jenin takes, it's just 70 kilometers. So it's a very small area at the end. But uh, moving between cities is so difficult, almost impossible to move between uh, cities. We have many kinds of checkpoints, something called permanent checkpoints, temporal, temporal checkpoints, occasional checkpoints, and so on. So we have many kind of checkpoints and students be cannot travel between cities or even from I mean, like we are we have at Birzeit we have villages or towns around Birzeit they sometimes cannot come uh, so this is disturbing the whole ac academic uh, uh, sector we're traveling to to outside the country is also very challenging and complex so we have to travel to jordan or to egypt to uh, to fly from there and the border most of the time is closed or very crowded or we have, we have like two hours per day it's open just two hours or three hours per day sometimes 
and so on. And you can imagine also the impact on the time you spend uh, when you travel and the extra cost uh, that we have to, uh, for example, we have to sp spend one or two nights while going and one or two nights while coming back to, in Jordan. Uh, so it also makes, uh, uh, it makes it difficult for people to cooperate with us sometimes. Another challenge we face is the academic uh, freedom. So academic freedom for Palestinian academia is a big issue uh, because of Israeli restrictions. And some academics have ended up in a jail uh, for speaking out, uh, as you know. Even, uh, even talking on social media is uh, very sensitive and critical. Uh, on top of that, which is really annoying, is some Palestinians face bias, really very painful like stories we have is that uh, when we send uh, to journals, especially in humanities, when we send articles to journals, we, typically we are rejected because of our political uh, stance. So this is limiting our uh, freedom. Uh, Another challenge again is the brain drain. This is one of the main, maybe the most impactful um, problems we have is that academic brain, brain drain in Palestine is a very serious issue. Unfortunately, the insecurity, the political situation and the restrictions like drive skilled academics to leave the country. And this currently is a very serious issue in Gaza. Very serious issue in Gaza. And you can imagine how the academic sector would be without professors and established academics. Ah, uh, the situation in Gaza is even not like uh, the situation in West Bank. So the situation in West Bank, I was talking about serious threats and challenges, but here we are talking about real idiocide, total idiocide intentionally destroying all universities and killing academics and students. So this is a very, you know, all the statistics because nobody is doing now uh, statistics. Uh, but as we know, for example, 95 uh, professors are killed. 17 of them are full professors, by the way. And uh, three uh, university presidents are also killed. Um, this, uh, tells you something, even, even as you see here, teachers and students, we have you know, 7,000 7, students are, are injured and 5,000 are killed. Um, uh, the education, so the, the 17 universities are totally destroyed. 80% of the schools are destroyed and so on. So uh, almost half a million of, almost all students now without access to education. So this is a uh, real idiocide. So uh, this is not compared with West Bank. So I, what I was talking is just uh, threats and challenges, but here is, is something I think humanity never experienced this. So, uh, okay. So I'm sure now maybe each of you might be thinking how to help. Uh, so I have some ideas for you <laughs> uh, to help academia. Of course, the priority goes to uh, not only Gaza, but also Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is also under threat all the time, more than giving help to Birzeit or to Jenin or to Hebron or to... So please help Gaza and Jerusalem first. Um, uh, in, many way, in many ways, such as, for example, we need help with advocacy and awareness, uh, facing discrimination and bias, um, so we need resources. Please share your resources with us. Please share your funding with us in, in, in whatever ways. Uh, if you can help us uh, subscribe in open, uh, open access publications or sharing even some library access of you, some of your library access, uh, we really need it because when we have, uh, when we need an article, we have to start calling friends and so on. So if you have if you can help, please do. 
uh, joint research projects. So I am sure even if small projects, and if you can bring somebody, students, professors from Gaza or from uh, Jerusalem, uh, if you have cash, you can send cash. If you can send it personally or your, or your institution, please do to students and to universities. Uh, if you want to help us also, please invite uh, invite one of the Palestinian professors to be co-supervisor co co with some of the PhD students because this is, you know, a way to mentor and to help uh, academics, in, especially in Gaza. So one of the issues, I mean, one of the ways to help brain drain in Gaza is to support professors there in whatever means. Uh, please promote us to uh, uh, promote our research, our researchers to maybe you are organizing a conference. Please bring somebody from Palestine. If you are an editor in a journal, please bring in, uh, somebody from Palestine. If you have scholarships, research visits, teaching assistants, uh, uh, teaching visits, whatever. Uh, so please do. We need this help, little help means a lot. And by the way, our message is to stay here. You know, we will stay in this land. So we need your help to stay in this land. Of course, recognition is good. So sending support letters is also its help. And uh, I will end up, uh, will end my, my talk with saying also supporting and cooperating with Palestinians is good because they are really passionate and really smart and hard work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mustafa. Um, I mean, definitely all the 